DJ. The politics of 2022 have taken center stage. And music has become an integral part of political campaigns. When you're dealing with the political class, it's not, it's not a company. There's no VAT, there's no registry, there's no office. So me make a young yote, kanana. Hey, this is going to be survive now. This is kidogo, kidogo. In this story, we look at the influence of music on elections, the motivation behind it, and the successes or failures of those involved. Asubui! Siyasa! Hata ni kimweta kimondo! Sasa kaida meacha kuwa kimu. Saa sita! Siyasa! Nobody can stop! Kwa kanisa utakuruwa. Jioni! Tumine kiyangu yote! Sana! Almost time to show, you know we can do without these people. Kabi wana yulikan, wale walikuwa na minuwa maidi kutoka Mexico. Wale gula! Women should not compete for our spaces. So when you are unbogable, you are not scared. The relationship between music and elections in Kenya is enjoying a new boom. Every election year, especially where there is a regime change, brings in new artists, new beats, and new genre. Unlike in the previous campaign seasons, 2022 has seen Azimiola Umoja presidential candidate Raila Odinga invest in music and collaborating with artists. This is something he and other presidential hopefuls could not do 25 years ago when he first vied for the country's top seat. The liberties wasn't, weren't as much as they are now. Definitely from a political angle you could not talk ill of the president, you could not criticize the government. But one thing that was very surprising was Moy was very patriotic and he encouraged musicians to write patriotic songs because when you go back in history, some of the greatest hits or songs that I fondly remember as a, as a, as a young person are patriotic songs. You know, Kenya Taifa Letu, Mazua Nyayo, you know, things just associated with, with his presidency. He had this knack for using musicians to demonstrate patriotism and his love for the country. It was pretty much an interesting period, but from a commercial perspective, everything else was crumbling. This included the contemporary music industry in which a younger generation of artists was coming up. Yeah, we didn't have organized structures for royalty collections, you know, businesses that would invest in the music business per se, like record labels, any organized system that allows the musician's career to grow. So it was pretty much his control, his word, and what the government deemed as fit for the audience. There was also a lot of censorship before foreign content, so it was not easily accessible except what the government deemed fit for the audience to consume. Yeah. The, 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 the media space hadn't really been liberalized per se. Things began to change towards the end of the 90s and in the early 2000s. There were new political formations in a bid to find Moy's replacement in the 2002 elections. There was also a shift in the music and media spaces. We, re we really saw an explosion of liberties in the media. And, you know, it culminated with his defeat. Of, it culminated with the defeat of Uhuru in 2002 when Raila rallied Kenyans, you know, with the unbogable chant. And as they say, the rest is history. Unbogable is a Luo and English word. Where UN is English, Bogebo is Luo. 
so when you are unbogable you're not scared you're not threatened you're resolute you're objective you know what you want and you're ready to pay any price for it my name is julius ondijo owino my popular names are maji maji uh, as a member of the group gidi gidi maji maji so those were two people there's gidi gidi and there's maji maji myself we were performing artists who had released uh, some hits before but unbogable resonated well with the people during the 2002 elections the singer of the song popular song unbogable that delivered a government called an unbogable government the Kibaki government clinched power in 2002 as a coalition of opposition parties that had one mission in common, to send home the Khan regime. Kenyans, if not all, wanted change. And uh, the reason why they wanted change was probably for socio-economic reasons. Uh, they felt corruption had uh, taken over governance and the country was not going to in the right direction. I think they also felt there was political instability. But I'd also like to say that uh, the song Unbogable was also much about us, in that uh, we were also facing the same thing in terms of our music career, our direction as youths, where are we going, where are we headed to, are we going to study, are we going to get jobs, or what? So we did a song Unbogable when we were very frustrated while still in Dandora. So the song also captured a lot of our internal energies and frustrations. So I guess the way we recorded it and wrote it matched the feeling and aspirations of Kenyans and it blew out. Despite being sung in the Luo, Unbogable became a hit even with the challenges the duo encountered while trying to get airplay for the song in local media houses. It was local to get airplay was very difficult. So. We could walk and walk and walk and walk, play our song, don't get airplay, but we broke through. Now, one way we broke through is that we normally used guerrilla marketing. We could make our songs popular in clubs. So when the radio personalities came to clubs, they could say, which song are people dancing to? Then they would pick it up. Once they pick it up, we bully our way uh, to radios by ensuring we push so that it is played until it got to a hit. Uh, material. Actually, we felt that was the last song we were going to do. We were frustrated with the music, the music industry. Our lives was not headed where we wanted it to go. And based on the little fame we had had then, so it was a conflict of uh, aspiration versus the reality. Uh, so we felt, ah, what are to find your issue? So that was a song done under very frustrated minds, but ready for anything. Their breakthrough came when members of the opposition coalition picked the song for use in their campaign against Uhuru Kenyatta, who was Kano's flag bearer in the race to State House. Things just happened that the song was carrying the aspirations of Kenyans, and the song itself sounded like opposing the status quo. So it naturally belonged to the opposition. And we were happy to have taken part in the that period of time, political change. Now when it turned to a campaign tool, I think there was no need that <laughs> uh, the Louis need had to be diffused Kidogo, so there was the Maasai, there was the Kikuyu, there was other tribes coming on board and uh, placing their verses on it. <laughs> It could belong now to the entire Kenyan community in sliced bits for deeper understanding of the song. For me, it was an entertaining song when I first heard it. I didn't expect it to get the kind of traction it did with the political class. So it was quite shocking when you know it, it was picked and it just, you know, the world just conspired to have that song work for the political class and it was just, it was a case of right timing and right 
you know, right place and the right time and everything. And when it got to political, a little bit, it was even banned on the national radios. Yeah. We were even approached by them, but we said no. Our conscience does not allow us to uh, commercialize uh, what the song is serving or the intention. Najua nilikuwa youth na nilikuwa na admire sasa musicians kama hao maji maji na gidi gidi so ili ni influence sana in my youth eh sana na hinya wakenga ipeva na for Ben Githai, a popular gospel artist in Kenya, the song Unbogable would bear the right message as he was preparing to vote for the first time in 2002. <laughs> Kama naweza tu kubarishwa, maybe na kanisa niandike kitu kama hiyo. So ili kuena nipatia maidi ya zangu, zile naweza kuja niandike. Uh, 2002 nilikuwa tuko, nilikuwa very young, in my early 20s, sijaingia sana kwa siyasa. Nilikuwa kwa makrusaid, na kumsifu mungu, and those days, Hunga kuwa natembea tu kwa tu unaongea mambo ya siyasa kwa, kwa kanisa utafurushwa. E, sio kama leo. Those days people are very conservative. But chini ya maji tulikuwa tunafanyia kibaki campaign. Na nilikuwa bold enough, nilikuwa nauliza watu. Kama, are you unbuagable? Na wao wanajibu. Na test waters, naanza kuimba. Who can? Buwako mi? Nikiona wanakubari. Si tunayendelea. So, iyo, iyo ilikuwa na effect kubwa sana na ili influence watu. Kachangia sana kumchagua kibaki. Honorable Mwai Kibaki is ahead of the next presidential candidate. That is Honorable Huru Kinyata by a very wide margin. It was a landslide victory for Kibaki and the NAC coalition. For the first time in Kenya's political history, power was being handed over to a member of the opposition. It was also the first time in the country's entertainment industry that a song would successfully rally a call for change. I think I played that song on the eve of election like 50 times. You know, it was just, it made sense at the time. You know, it was just the right song. It, was just, it had just the right energy to, you know, invigorate the nation and just clamor for change. Unajua, hapa, especially hapa mulima Kenya, we talk of kuumera kuumera, kama tathura, yani kusema, tunatokea kama siyaf, kutokelezea, kutokelezea, kuumera kuumera. Lazima kukue na trigger ya kuumera, ili watu watokelezea. Iyo trigger ni nini? Sana sana ukuwa ni wimbo. But as victory resounded on the political side, the duo Gidi Gidi and Majimaji silently retreated to the oblivion of the very people for whom they used their voices to rally support. You know how people think, like now you're in government, especially when the president says my unbogable government, uh, a normal Ordinary Kenyan would have felt there should have been more to these uh, young guys. And uh, so to speak, we are human. There is an acknowledgement of sorts from the government. So uh, on the list, you'd expect that. So whenever you Google, you say, these two gentlemen contributed to a lot of our political history and change. So you'd expect that. And I don't think we've ever received that. Although the relationship between members of the coalition government was as short-lived as the song that helped to propel them in power, unbeknown to the unbogable duo, 
they had cleared a path for other contemporary artists who would be involved in songs that rallied specific causes. They also showed the way to a new relationship between music and politics. Definitely Unbogable opened the doors for Banjuka. <laughs> that was the president. And I was also involved in another campaign for Kibaki called Zinduka. It is a relationship that momentarily lures gospel artist Ben Githai off the pulpit. Githai's debut in political podiums came in 2017 when he recorded the famous Tano Tena song in favor of the Jubilee Party and is now singing for the Azimio camp. Unlike Unbogable, whose lyrics were a representation of the public's feelings towards the country's state of affairs, Githai's inspiration is different. Onajua, let me tell you, in, in uh, politics, there are two things, royalty and interest. Nahizo dizo zimenisukuma, According to Gidai, the ICC case against Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto in relation to the 2007 and 2008 post-election violence thrust him into the political field. You know, from, from 2011, 2010, I was in the wangu wa mafataro. Uhuru alikuwa natumia huo wimbo wakati alikuwa na enda maombi. Alikuwa naombewa kwa sababu alikuwa diyo sasa alikuwa anatakikana ende heg. Na wakatengeneza musurura wa maombi mahali kwingi sana wakiwa na deputy president. Kila wakati walikuwa wananialika. Kabura waonge, kabura waombewe, ninaimba huo wimbo. So 2017, nikaona wamesu kumwa sana na raira. Nikashindwa mimi, ni contribution gani yangu naweza wapatia. His song was picked by the Jubilee Party to be their rallying call for votes. At the same time, Onyi Jalamo had composed a song voluntarily that will be the opposition's NASA campaign anthem. NASA, 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 NASA. For Jalamo, popularly known as Onyi Tibim, this was also his debut into the Kenyan music scene. Maja, the only thing in what we about Onyi, your song, most part of it, imeimbwa kijaluo, but weddings ziko apondani are things that are now happening. Yeah, so only those one understand. Because that's why your song, Kuna Mali Ni Mesema, Wang Ni Onge Gimi Weo. Wang Ni Onge Gimi Weo means, round E, Hakuna Kitu Ina Wachwa. Makata Kochuno, Toa Donjo Giba Langewa. Yani round E, Atutuwa Chikitu, Lakini Kitu Shinda Sana. Ikibidi tutaingia na mbalangewa. Mbalangewa ni zile manjumba za ushago, kuna koka na zile space. Ile space yenye breathing. Hizo space zenye paka inaingia kakuenda kuiba chakula ndani ya nyumba ile. Tunasema ikitu shinda sana tutaingia na hapo. And hapo ndo penye baba alingia. The prediction he claims to have made in his song refers to an unexpected event on March 9, 2018, when President Uhuru Kenyatta and opposition leader Raila Odinga, rivals in the 2017 presidential elections, shook hands in public as a show of reconciliation after a highly contested election season. So, ukiangalia 2017, ile wakati wa kama election inakuwa nullified, Vile tulikuwa tuna celebrate. Those are the things that were part of the song. Ya kwamba, mambo mingi inenda kufanyika ambao hayaja wai fanyika. Iko kwa yo song. 
I don't think siwezi kumbuka kama kuna nchi yoyote wale waienda kwa election na raisi mwenye ako kwa uongozi akatangazi wa kwamba ameshinda na ikaenda kotini na election ikakuwa nullified i don't remember kama iko imewahi fanyika so in kenya it was the first thing ilifanyika na those were some of the words nilikuwa nimesema kwa wimbo however the handshake event set the lyrics for another artist the late john d matthew whose song Twabe to Rehediri carries a message that reminds President Uhuru Kenyatta about a political debt owed to his deputy William Ruto. <laughs> The proverbial debt has become a pertinent debate amongst those eyeing the Mount Kenya vote basket. But with Odinga now on the race to state house in the August 2022 elections, Jalamo continues to compose songs in his favor. Ukisikiliza song ya inawezekana utasikia inaongelelea mambo ya azimio la umoja utaona in appreciate sana handshake cuz handshake kila mkenya anajua vile ilisaidia sana nchi yetu ya Kenya <coughs> inaongelelea zile utano za Raila na pia inaongelelea umuhimu ya kuachana na mambo ya ukabila and that is why hata sasa unaona nimefanya the same same inawezekana nimefanya collab na dada wetu ya uh, uwanja uh, is a kikuyu artist so unaona hiyo nia yetu ni nini we are trying the best we can kuweka Kenya watu wote wakuwe kitu kimoja wa Kenya kitu kimoja kikuyu na jaluo ni kitu kimoja ama vipi onyi unasema je while songs have been composed to persuade voters to vote for particular candidates, there are those whose mission was divisive, thus placing artists on the wrong side of the law. In July 2012, Kamande Wakioi, Moigai Wanjoroge and the late John Dimethio were charged with incitement to violence and hate speeches in their songs. But even as artists who compose songs for political campaigns do so under different levels of motivation, when the money factor comes in, most have little or nothing to be proud of. Unajua ni kama ukiwa ushago. Sisi ushago ulikuwa ukiambiwa unasafiri kwenda Nairobi hata hata kulala unashindwa kulala. Hmm? Eh hey, naenda Nairobi. Unashindwa kulala kwa sababu unaenda Nairobi unatukua tunaambiwa na Nairobi na wakata nini. So nikiwa katika safari ya kwenda Nairobi niko na wewe wewe unajua Nairobi tuko kwa gari tunaenda Nairobi hata hata uninunulie kuku kwa gari ama uninunulie nyama choma ama uninunulie nini akili yangu yote iko Nairobi so mimi akili yangu yote kanan we have started the journey into kanan we are already crossing the jordan <laughs> 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 eh hey, hizi zingine ni ku survive ni hizi ni kidogo kidogo eh hey, hizi magari manyumba ni, ni these are vitu ndogo lakini kitu cha muhimu nchi yetu ya Kenya ambao tunaikana unajua kana ni, ni kuweka nchi katika mkono sawa that is the most important thing campaigns I mean, we've been engaged by a governor somewhere. Let me not say it. <laughs> but, yeah, we are creating a song for them. Eric Musioka, a music producer and entertainment entrepreneur, attributes this to lack of good bargaining skills among the artists involved and generally unregulated deals between politicians and musicians. The problem with this business, it's not a legit business whereby you're going to invoice it's an office, you're going to follow up with somebody. It's just, you know, yo, do for me this, I'll give you this. And if somebody runs away with you, with your cash i mean there's really no way you can take them for any arbitration so it's 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 literally it's it's a very big gamble to take and i would just advise anybody taking that route to be extra careful and just weigh your options most of the time you need the money and that's the carrot that they dangle 
for you, but where will your career end up? You can't actually tell somebody this is the way, but you can tell somebody when things are going bad. Pokiona mutu anaingia pale, anataka kukuona kwa TVN, na anataka kuniacha inje, njua kuna dilo ambao si mzuri. Lakini tukingia kwa ofisi yako direct na wewe, na makaratasi yote iweko kwa meza, ninajua kama ilitoka elfu miabiri ni elfu miabiri, wewe kuja pukula pa azentiji yako, na mimi ni chukua yangu. Hivyo divo tunaweza advice. Musioka also mentions lack of creativity and objectivity when composing songs for campaigns as another factor that lowers the bargaining power of artists during political seasons. The problem now I've seen in the last in the previous uh, elections, unlike Unbogable and Banjuka, musicians are crafting songs specifically for the politicians and they don't have the same impact. You know, it's very different pulling out an already existing commercial song that people have already connected to and they can adapt to your theme rather than composing a fresh new song talking about your policies and all that. It, it's not worked. As someone who has seen the effects of music on elections, Julius Owino believes that the composers of songs that were used for the 2017 elections could have done better. Both camps were satisfied with their songs, number one. Both songs carried the aspirations of either side or branding of either side. I'm not sure if both songs delivered a Kenya everybody wanted, because you want an in-between. So none of them sang about a Kenya they want. In the first world nations, like the USA, presidential candidates heavily rely on endorsements from celebrities who attract millions of votes. Is he the one? South Carolina, I do believe he's the one to bring us the audacity of hope, Barack Obama! In Kenya, we've not reached that status. Our politicians are the rock stars, I mean, we are the ones who run to them for the money. I've sat in these political campaigns and political strategy meetings and it's funny how musicians and artists really have no say in how politics, in how politics run. Pretty much we are non-existence. I think sometimes it's a, it's a case of but you really, they're really not at the forefront. Yes, you need them, but you know, if they become too difficult, you can, be, you can do without them. Music is a powerful tool. Politics has the ability to erode intellect, whereby now your emotional connection is stronger than your intellectual connection. So at that event where the popular music drives you towards just one thing, then uh, it does not bring your intellect to play in that aspect. As Kenya approaches the August 2022 elections, politicians are at it again, using music sung by the current generation of artists for their campaigns, with every lyrics and every beat carefully chosen for one purpose, to drum up support for their election beat. <laughs> One such song is Sipangwingwi, which has featured in campaign rallies by the two main rival groups, UDA and Azimio Umoja. Maji maji leta triomio. Kimbi hapa ju triomio wewe ni mwepesi. Wewe peke yako. We could not reach Triomio and X-Ray about this use of their song, but artists who have been there before them agree that the Sipangwingwi tune is timely and carries the attitude of the people towards the country's state of affairs. On the positive, it means I'm in charge of my destiny. Say what you want to say, I'll make my own decision. Sipangwi? Sipangwingwi. So maybe the issue would be who is using which side of the divide or which divide is using that song Sipangwing? We had a feeling about the nation. Maybe that is what has not been brought out clearly. 
but it is a good song for the younger generation, I would say 18 to 24 slash 26, going to 30. Kuna hiyo kadancing, vile kana chukua vijana, unanote kana chukua tu vijana. So, na imagine sasa kijana wa, nilikuwa kijana wa hiyo age, yule kijana wako kwa hiyo age, vile na chukuliwa na hiyo beat, inaweza kumpereka mpaka kwa polling station na vote. Eh, hiyo beat haende tu, sababu hiyo hiyo. Maisha ni yangu. Ajipata ya naweka tu vote mpaka hapa. So, ni kitufanya kazi. Despite the challenges facing the music industry, music continues to be a key element in Kenyan politics and the spirit of unbogable still lives on 20 years later. So music and politics is an item of co-creation. We all speak to the same masses, only differently. If the two meet in a well-organized, created item, then it's magic and an item for social growth or social change, depending on what it's going to be used for. If history is written well with a genuine person about the political history or growth of this nation, that name, that song, those two young men, Julius and uh, Giddy. Julius and Joseph should be written somewhere as had participated in political growth and change of this nation. When Julius Owino, also known as Majimaji, and his colleague Joseph Ogidi, also known as Gidi Gidi, sang Unbogable, it was to be the end of their music career. Well, it may have been so, but the spirit and message of the song has thrust Owino into a new career. Yes, of course. I'm vying as a member of parliament in Seme constituency. That's my rural home, home of my ancestors. And uh, I want to share with them my experience and bring change. We hope to win, we know we will win and we will bring the change and history shall be written again.